Everybody's Tyler here at Speedway checking in with 8823Z Zoom Call. She's having a great run so far at the end of day one as we're filming this. Zoom Call, a lot of great stuff on this robot that we'll be covering here. Uh, doing their own custom API, so I'd love to hear more about that. We'll be going through this robot with their four bar, talking about some feature plans they've been doing, and seeing how they're getting ready for day two of this event. So let's learn more about this team coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Let's start with Eli talking about this uh, bottom intake that you're running through on here. So talk to me more about why it's so important for your team and how it's been working. Uh, yeah, so this is our bottom intake. It feeds into our uh, upper intake, as you can see here with the two standoffs. It just comes and scoops them up. But it basically, the flex wheels pick it up off the ground. Something we've been doing that we picked up uh, at Mall of America was these spacers in the flex wheel. Kind of helps uh, bulge it out a little bit at that point. So then it kind of digs into the center of the ring to just helps pick it up, makes it a little more consistent. Uh, running a 5.5 watt motor, locked at 200 RPM, so we geared it up because we didn't need the extra power. We just wanted to run a little faster, so it's 400 RPM. Um, uh, the biggest thing for us was that we need to be able to pick up the top ring of a two stack. So we have pistons on the bottom, and when we activate it, puts the thing up, just sucks the ring right off the top, and then we can back up, drop it back down, picks it up perfectly. Um, that also, these pistons act as our hard stop for when it goes down using these spacers here, so it can't go down any farther than that. And then we were having a problem where this ramp would get compressed into the floor tiles, so we just added these rubber bands, just takes a little bit of the tension off the ring, doesn't press the ramp, sucks it right up. So this is a full rebuild pretty much from your robot other than your base, right? So when you're talking about going for a two stack and stuff, was that part of your initial strategy back at Mall, or has that totally changed since then? Uh, we tried to do it at Mall, did not work, so that's completely new for this one. The only other thing is we changed is uh, changed it to a 5.5 watt, slowed it down a little bit, gave it a little more torque, it works a lot better. Logan, let's talk wall stakes here and talk to me more about uh, how your four bar is working uh, so far for your robot and uh, anything else that you want to dive more into on that. All right, well, uh, at Mall of America, we couldn't actually score on the wall stakes, which we found was not advantageous. So, um, after doing some research, we came up with the four bar idea that allows us to get it right up there and score two at a time with the two hooks right there. All of them are spaced out. All the hooks are spaced out just right so that we can hold two rings, go up, there we go, score both of them. So you're actually scoring from essentially this active intake that way, right? Yep. So what made you want to go that route? I mean, that's definitely a unique aspect. Most teams that we see are just putting in some sort of passive grip or something like that and scoring. What made you actually want to go with this route? Uh, we went with this route because we wanted to keep the robot as small and as um, compact as possible. And we didn't want to build a big mechanism like our Lady Brown or a fishtail because um, we were already using this space for our uh, alliance core, so uh, this was the best route. So looking at this route that you've gone so far, you know, we talked about future plans, that sort of thing. Are you happy with this uh, so far, or would you make any changes to it? Um, I'm happy with it so far. The only thing is that it can't score on alliance stakes, which is a very big flaw. It's the whole reason we built this mechanism. So that's the only thing I would really change with the intake. Other than that, it's, it's scoring and performing great. Very cool. Declan, let's talk about the uh, base design on this as well, too. I know that's that's one of the few things that you've kept consistent through this whole way. So let's take a look at how it, how it works on it and just break it down for me more. All right. Uh, so on our base, we have 77 watts of motors, three 11 watts on each side with a 5.5 up above on each side. Uh, the 5.5s, of course, are locked at 200 RPM, so we have to gear that up to reach the proper speed. Uh, our main design detail that makes ours distinct is that uh, our base has encoder wheels set into the base itself rather than on a separate mechanism so that we can reserve space and keep everything nice and compact, multi-purpose. Are you taking uh, that feedback just for auto or is it being used during uh, also driver control? Uh, it's mostly for autos and stuff. Uh, helps us with our P 
PIDs. Yeah. And making everything nice and consistent. And then looking at it, we mentioned that, you know, this is a full rebuild minus this dry base on it. So overall, you got to be happy, I'm assuming, with your dry base for what made you not want to do any changes? Was it just the performance that you're uh, getting out of it? The reason we didn't redesign it is because this is like the one part of our robot that we like. We've been designing this base since the announcement of the game sure. last year. So we spent a lot of time figuring out what would work best and what we wanted out of a drive base and then put that into motion early this summer. No, oh, love it and glad it's been working out for you so well as well too. Cameron, let's talk about programming a little bit more. Uh, you know, we talked earlier, you're running a custom API as well too, so I'd love to hear just more about like, I mean, why you even do something like that, right? And what benefits you've seen out of it. Anything else uh, software-wise you might want to talk about in your robot? Yeah, so we've got a lot of um, stuff with this custom API that I've been developing in conjunction with old programmers from our team and current ones that does a lot of stuff with this tracking wheel and PID. Like all of our driving, incredibly automatic. We don't even have to like do much. We just tell it, go forward, this many inches and it's spot on every time. A big part of the um, a big part of the API as well is we have a autonomous selector, which we see going on in the brain here. This is the biggest part. It allows us to store as many programs as we want in our autonomouses, and they're just assigned to buttons, and we can draw icons. This allows us to very quickly switch between programs. We don't have to worry about selecting the right program on the controller. The icons allow us to clearly label at a quick glance what is what. Like we got skills for the S. We've got blue side, red side, positive, negative, and um, then we can run macros and stuff as well for testing, tuning. Um, it collects data as well, and we can dump that data onto the laptop to review the match afterwards. And overall, it's, be, it's constantly being added to, but what we have has already been really helpful. And you and I were talking earlier, uh, you got to drop the website that maybe in the summer we might see a code release, something like that. Where could somebody find that? Uh, yeah, it's www.evapi-milford.com. Uh, it's very bare bones right now, but I'm going to be working on that this summer to publish what I got before I graduate. I think that's awesome that you're willing to share that with the community and give that as well, too. So looking forward to seeing that as well. Hey, Logan, before we uh, wrap up, I know we talked about maybe a couple of different changes, but you guys are even looking at making some changes after day one here for day two of the event. What might we see in day two and anything else for the future you might want to talk about? Yeah, so um, one thing that we've seen at uh, this event especially is um, getting the rings out of the corner is huge because it's so difficult to keep your base in the corner if there's a bunch of rings there. So we actually <clears throat> built this, um, we rubber banded it down since it didn't, so it didn't flop out. But we built this sweeper and it's just gonna go right in there. It's just gonna sweep them right out. Uh, we just need to attach a pneumatic right on there and it'll be good for day two. Awesome. Well, guys, we're really, really looking forward to seeing how your performance here so far. Zoom call once again. Thanks so much for taking time to tell us more about your team and your robot. Good luck here at Speedway, but a lot of great stuff teams can learn from here. So we can't wait to say you. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks, guys. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.